The round is over. The last remaining UREF ship in the system, besides the Pobluckland Wren, is complaining about the Pobluckland Wren, saying that they're attacking them. A, a missile just hit, once again, a Pobluckland Wren missile. Uh, speaking of missiles, the crystal ship, which is off over here somewhere, has just fired two at the Pobluckland Wren. On the bright side, Lieutenant Capazoid and Ensign X-Ray, the crossing guard lady, are both awake now and ready for action. But the crew has to talk and decide what that action is going to be. Ensign Snugbug, the ship's pilot, speaks first. Let's cut it and escape from the system before the planet shoots us down. And don't forget the crystal ship off the map. I bet it will not be friendly. Our mission is to escape, so let's do just that. On the way out, we can take what scans we can get to of the planet. So, power to the helm, please, and Ensign Snugbug will do his best to accelerate us out of this mess. Shaking herself awake, Lieutenant Capazoid, the, uh, the, the, the ranking marine, the ranking fighty person, rises like a, a statue, a, 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 a heap of a statue. Do not trust the computer. Do not trust the intel. Look at the answer so far. If there is any level of control at all coming from out with the hull, the answer to is the helm under control from out with the ship should have been yes, regardless of where else control might be coming from. The replies have not been logical. Oh, uh, that's true. We could always ask. Are the answers logical? The computer runs the ship. Essentially, it is the ship, or at least the only communicative part of it. We're asking the computer if the computer is under outside influence. It's like asking politicians to investigate government corruption. You mean that would work? Oh. Lieutenant Corpulent Runt, as the ranking uh, member of the, the ship, the, um, the leader, if you will, um, and you will, respect her authority, uh, speaks up. I know this is a hard decision, and some will not like it. My intention is to get closer to the planet and get a good scan, then escape. Let's keep it tight, people. Continue the mission. Closer? That thing is shooting at us. And in addition, something is controlling the ship and seems to steer it in the planet's direction. So getting away will be difficult enough, even without trying to get near the planet first. Snugbug, I'm asking for your support. Just one scan of the planet and we're out. It's been rough, but we're still in good shape. Let's do this, and then we'll escape. Rumble, grumble. Well, okay. <coughs> do your thing, and then let's head out of here ASAP. Snugbug will await your order to head out of the system, and in the meantime, we'll try to keep any other influence from controlling the ship. Junior Lieutenant Merker, uh, having just finished helping X-Ray the crossing guard laid to her feet, uh, replies, Ooh, Last I heard, the UREF wasn't a democracy. Awaiting orders, sir! I was talking like that for uh, Lieutenant, Junior Lieutenant Merker because he's an insect man called a Zoallen. Um, the, only, the only real um, species, at least in the basic set in this game, other than humans that are that are somewhat recognizable the um the game does a good job of making the aliens very alien and i think that was one of the design goals and i think that because i read it um but the zoallans are insect like you can imagine though insects um coming to some sort of uh, prominence they seem to um they seem to be good at surviving here anyway um so for those of you who haven't been following um, the the forum or don't really know exactly what that conversation was all about. Basically, the crew of the Pobluckland Wren is discussing whether or not to run away or to stay. They came to stay, um, I think, with the caveat that they're going to just make one scan of the planet and then try and get out of there. Um, meanwhile, there are missiles coming at them. The planet's going to be shooting at them soon. Um, and let's get to playing. The first phase of the round sees things getting back to normal. Uh, Ensign Snugbug slows down the ship a little bit. Um, Merker is going back to his station, as is X-Ray the Crossing Guard Lady. Um, 
Lieutenant Capazoid is drawing her knife, ready to finish off the robots that are lying on the floor, malfunctioning slightly. And Lieutenant Corpulent Runt is preparing to scan the planet, which then uh, tries to shoot the, the people. So we're doing the silhouette shot. Um, this is going to be the middle. That's seven, eight, and nines on the end here. No, no, no. Seven, eight, nine, seven, six, five. There we go. And that's a seven, so that's going to go straight up the middle here. And I got to work out some damage. Okay, so I'm rolling four dice here. Um, one because the ship has shields, and three because that's how strong this cannon is. Um, you roll them, and the shields are going to take away the highest. And that's how that works. So you have a five, a four, and a two. And those are going to be applied as follows. Five, four, two, because the cannon's coming from right through here. Shwee! So you got five in here, which is really bad for those people. Four in there, and then a two there. Now let's roll up damage. We're going to roll Snugbug first. Um, he's considered, he's braced, uh, because that's his special ability. Um, and so that means he gets to re-roll any one of these. Whoops. And he's definitely going to re-roll this six. I know it's a little bit cockeyed, but I think it would have been a six anyway. He's going to take that one. And that's a four. So he is going to take four points of damage. Would have been five, but he's wearing a set of nice armor. And that makes it so that it's only four. Let's roll for the bots now so that wolf is left hanging. Let's we'll start with this little um, this popcorn bot. Or a yellow-leaved plant. Uh, that one's okay. And now we'll do this guy with the knife here. And that's okay too. Now we'll let's, let's roll for wolf. Let's roll for um, Lieutenant Capazoid. She would normally take nine. I think she's going to use luck on this one. I think you can re use luck. I'm not going to look it up. I think she can. And then she's going to trust her silicoid armor to help her with the rest of it. That was not very lucky. Uh, she'll just take it and she gets to, to reduce the damage by 1d6 here. Six! Very good. There's, there's her luck. So she is only going to take three. Give you a sense of perspective. There is... Um, Capazoid's hit points there. So that three wasn't three damage wasn't that bad. Um, now the damage that Snugbug took was a little more um, damaging. That was half of his hit points. I think the worst thing about that attack though is that it's damaged the helm. So there's going to be no steering, no speeding up, no slowing down, no nothing until that's fixed. Suddenly the shields go down. That's that's not normal. The shields are supposed to go down and the guns go up. Yay! All right, so the crew has decided to do their scan and get the donkey out of there. That um, that actual uh, mortal danger has sobered them up somewhat. So, uh, Junior Lieutenant Merker came here, and he's he's assisting by remote the action of um, uh, Lieutenant Corpulent Runt here. She is going to scan. She gets a plus three, one for the science bay, one for Merker, and one for preparation. So she's going to roll. I will use these dice. Um, Whatever this result is, minus three, is how many she gets to add to the data. And if she gets ten points of data, which is, you know, if this is going to be the last scan, we're going to only be worried about multiples of tens. So that's going to add to the intel. And that's a ten right there. She'll probably just leave it at that. So Snugbug's got to try to repair this module. It'd be ideal for um, Capazoid to do it, but Capazoid's not very good at repairing things. Snugbug's not the best either, but better than nothing. So, he's going to give a, give it a shot. He gets a plus three to this roll. I think he has to get an 11 or higher. And that's a 10. Plus three is definitely greater than 11. So, the helm is repaired. Now we have to ask ourselves, is um, Capazoid going to drop her knife in order to uh, try and pilot the ship. It's a tough call, but I'm going to say no. I think the um, the the fear of the computer and all that uh, would mean she wants to proceed with hacking away at these robots. So I think the the, the fear is that they're going to come back to life. Uh, so she needs to get fives or sixes. No sixes, I think. She's gonna reroll. And nope, she has not been able to do it yet. So I think she's going to put in one point of luck. Nope. 
And another blast rips towards the ship as I got a hit. That one missed. Hey, it's the third phase now of this round, and I think this is round three. Um, and Lieutenant Capazoid was able to destroy this robot. It's gone. I'm just going to take it off the map. I guess there's still some crumbled parts there, but it's completely gone. Great job. Overview of the rest of the phase. The crew is basically just uh, preparing themselves to get out of there. Um, Corpulent Runt has moved to the hyperdrive. She can't start programming it yet, however, until she's moved... Um, the ship's moved with, uh, I think, 12 spaces away from the planet. The the nearness of that, um, grab the gravitational forces or whatever of the planet uh, makes it difficult to program a hyperdrive, as you well know. Um, everyone else is just kind of getting to, to spaces. and Yeah, oh, the, the ship's turned away. It's, it's heading in the right direction, so that's good. Uh, but then it got turned again by that... Um, that mysterious ghost that keeps moving the ship in the in the wrong way. It's still going away from the planet, but kind of, well, kind of diagonally instead of directly. Phase four, Capsoid's taking another shot at those those bots, this time the knifey one. They have a knife one. And, oh, double sixes! That's great! That's, that's, those are called boxcars. Goodbye. The tug-of-war over uh, the bearing of the ship, the heading, has changed to a tug-of-war between X-Ray the Crossing Guard Lady and whatever ghost is controlling the ship, uh, between gun power and shield power. She keeps moving it from guns to shields, and they move it back from, from shields to guns. Actually, it doesn't keep happening. It's happened like once or twice. The round ends much quieter than previous rounds, just an overview of what everyone's been doing. Um, actually, the crossing guard lady's been transferring power and pumping up things, trying to get energy to the shields, basically, and that's, that's the result of, of her efforts. It's been good. It's windy, so our real people are falling down here. Sorry, guys. Oh, well, I'm just going to let them rest a little bit. I think they're tired. Um, these two here haven't been doing a lot. They've been trying to assist with the helm maneuvers and failing. Neither of them are very good pilots. They're kind of just on standby, ready to, to um, do other things if necessary. Just They're both preparers, so they both can um, uh, build up bonuses for a particular action by um, doing nothing else during the phase, basically, having that be their action. And so they've been doing that and then attempting to help with helm actions, and they've just been failing. Um, but the helm's been doing fine. It's up to speed six now in a bearing due uh, away from the planet. So if all goes well during this next round, it should be one, two, three, four, five, six, about right here. And then that'll be about ten spaces away. So then the round after next round, um, <laughs> Cavazoi can start programming the hyperdrive, which has its own difficulties. Um, there are missiles approaching, which is not good. Lieutenant Capazoid has destroyed another broken robot. She's standing over the final one when a flash of light, um, and I'll say it's rainbow light, a flash of rainbow light, this robot comes online and falls down. He destroyed that one, and this robot comes online and is going to slash at Lieutenant Capazoid. It misses, but not before shaking her up. That was a surprise. Another blast from the planet at the Pobuckland Wren. Uh, remember, the target that hits is in between five and nine. So if it's outside that, they're safe. That's that's a six on these die. See, so that's a seven. So that's gonna go. Well, actually, no, it's hitting from the back so that's gonna that's gonna be straight up the middle here all right luckily the shields are are pretty full thanks to x-ray the crossing guard lady so that's gonna gonna be rolling seven dice here Let's see if I can get together seven dice that's six plus one is seven and the four highest will be removed all right and a pretty low roll anyway so that's just going to be these these four here. So that means that none of these are damaged, but each of these folk are going to take 1d6 points of damage. And not so bad. Corpulent Runt took only two damage. She had to use a point of luck to make that happen. Uh, and Lieutenant 
her junior lieutenant Merker, he took no damage because he has a carapace. He has really hard insect arm and um, insect abdomen that makes it so that he takes less damage. Quick note about hull damage. As the ship takes damage, it not only um, damages the modules inside or has the potential to as well as the people inside, but it also adds up to just the overall hull damage. Now when that hull damage gets to particular points, um, if it's if it's above any of these numbers, this the Publucklin Wren is size 6. Um, so what that means is it has to make these rolls uh, when it gets above that, that amount. So if the ship takes 5 more hull damage essentially what that means is that we'll have to start rolling survival rolls and if we if we miss the survival roll then the ship is destroyed. Lieutenant Capazoli take another shot at the last robot this time it's standing so if she doesn't take it down with her her viper knife it is going to try to take her down with its viper knife and she um, she knocked it down but it might get back up Another blast has hit the ship. That's going to hit life support right here, which uh, that could be really bad if it's destroyed. I don't think it will be, though, with all of these shields. Um, shields are at four, so that means we're going to be rolling seven again. And basically, the only way life support is going to be hurt is if all of these are higher than three. And I see several that are not higher than three, so I'm not even going to mess with it. I'm not even going to deal with that. Oh, I, I do actually need to mess with it because it's going to damage the hull. No. Okay, so we have four, five, eight. Eight's going to add to the hull, so now we got to do a hull check. Hull check, we have to roll higher than a three, or three or higher. So if we roll snake eyes, someone will use the hull set stabilizer, and then we'll likely not roll snake eyes. All right, we're okay. Whew. It was the crew of the Publucklin Wren. <laughs> the last of uh, your friends that are in the UREF uh, in this space has left. So it's just you and some missiles and a planet that is shooting rainbow bolts at you. Another blast came at the ship. This one missed. It got a 10, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 was over here. Um, not a lot else happened. The, sp the speed is now 8, though. We've really bumped up our speed, so that's going to help us get far away from this planet as quickly as possible. We're not going to outrun the missiles, however, so Lieutenant Capazoid went back to the science bay. Um, cause she can use some EMP stuff, I think, on the missiles to kind of help steer them away uh, once they get closer. So she's going there to do that. Um, Wolf still hacking away at the robot. Uh, has yet to destroy it permanently. Getting near the end of the phase, um, ghost hijinks again. The ship got turned. Um, it's getting quite fast, which which makes it di more difficult to control. So basically the speed plus the size of the ship is the difficulty number. So now the difficulty number is 15 to control the ship. Um, but the ghost was able to do it. It was it was a long shot. Well, I won't talk about that. Um, so now it's, it's bearing here. Not moving so so uh, directly away from the missiles anymore. After three rounds of or phases rather of preparation, Lieutenant Capazoid has successfully electronic countermeasured one of these missiles, so she just sent it back two spaces. And the ghost forces that are manipulating the ship have caused it to go way out of control. It went clear up there. Ah! Now it's shaking apart, which did some more damage to the ship. We're going to have to do another hull integrity check. It's also going to be a pain for the characters because they're going to have to deal with this massive minus six penalty. Well, it'll be a minus five after this round, so let's go ahead and do that now. Or after this phase. Um, so basically, uh, anything but uh, snake eyes again, and they are okay. Whew. Good news! It's the start of round four, and that's always exciting. And the ship has gotten far enough away from the planet that um, Lieutenant Corpulent Runt, and it strikes me that I may have been saying the wrong name for some of this. I think sometimes I call her Capazoid. Um, I don't know why that is. But Corpulent Runt uh, can now start programming the hyperdrive to get out of there. That would be a relief because... Um, they keep getting shot at, and the missiles are getting closer, and the missiles are not affected by shields. More great news, the robot is now destroyed. There are no more 
robots or bots I'm sorry they're called bots on the ship so that is going to um, allow Lieutenant Capazoid to focus on other matters no sooner did Snugbug get the ship under control but the ship got itself out of control again not as bad as before only a slight damage um, of I actually should have only added one. I added seven instead because that was the total amount of change. So it should be at 35, but that's enough for another check. Um, so again, not wanting snake eyes. I feel silly rolling this on camera, but if it did get snake eyes, I would feel silly not rolling it on camera. Even more great news, the crystal ship has just left the system. So that's another thing that um, the, the crew will not have to worry about. It's fired off some more missiles, but they're pretty far away. Rainbow lasers from the planet. Seven. That's straight up the middle here. That's going to be four plus six is ten dice. Yeah, that's going to be annoying. I got to get together ten dice. So Corpulent Runt got back to this the hyperdrive just in time to take some more damage. Let's see how much she's going to take here. Whoops, got to put that back. That's going to be one damage, and then Junior Lieutenant Merker is going to take. 5 minus 2 is 3. I think he's going to... I think he'll just accept it. Well, maybe he should luck it. He'll luck it. No, he'll accept it. He'll, yeah, he'll accept it. Another hull integrity check. Now the number to beat is 4. So uh, snake eyes or th a roll of a 3 is, um, is problematic. Alright, so we're okay. Whew. We got the programming started. Um, other than that, not a lot has happened. Uh, Snugbug got the ship back under control again. It hasn't gone out of control yet. Um, the ghost is using the science bay for strange purposes. We don't really know what it's doing, but this use marker has shown up, and uh, Lieutenant Capazoid has not done anything in the science bay yet. She's preparing to use the EMP for when the missiles get close. All right, so. Um, worker tried to heal himself, didn't work. We have to roll to see if the ship gets blasted yet again. And 10, that does mean that life support would. 7, 8, 9, no, it means nothing. Cap is always annoyed by the presence of this marker. It, makes it, so, it was already kind of a long shot for her to try and EMP these missiles. She's not, um, she's not a science expert by any means, but the, the only other option to deal with them is the cannon. And the cannon is at the prow of the ship. And so Melky could would be the one to shoot there. Um, since she's kind of aborted using the EMP, um, she's going to ask some questions. I'm not going to stop now and, and have the group ask, ask questions. I'm just going to add to a total that, of questions that you'll get to ask later to try and solve the mystery of what's going on with the ship. X-ray, the crossing guard lady, is going to attempt to tractor one of these missiles. What that's going to do is freeze it in place for a phase. So, difficulty is 12 plus 14. She prepared, so she's going to have a difficulty of 10, which is difficult. Uh, 6, that's not going to do it. She can try a reroll. If she gets a 6, she's successful. Nope. Fifth phase of round four, the tractor beam was successful this time. So this missile that was about to hit is going to be frozen. Um, and that is going to end that phase. So we're in the final phase of the game. Let's go ahead and do movement right now. Uh, ship's going to go one. That missile's frozen, so it's not going to hit. But this one is getting rather close. And despite the approaching missiles, things seem to be going pretty well for our heroes. There's two um, programming markers here. We're, we've ended the round. I can start taking these off. These are usage markers, um, which what are what made it prohibitive for um, Lieutenant Capazoid to use the science bay and made it harder to program the hyperdrive. So it, it simulates the faster you try to use the hyperdrive, um, the harder each it, it is. So she got a, a decent amount of programming done. She would have liked to get more. Um, so things are looking all right, but then the ghost struck again and made it go out of control. So the hole uh, has, we have to get uh, five or higher on our roll, or the hole is going to disintegrate. And that was ten, that's five higher than five, so that's okay. So that's not so bad. The missiles are there, they're going to hurt. The shields don't affect missiles. Um, but maybe something can be done about that. Maybe that's not so bad. But here's where there's trouble. 
dun, dun, dun. This robot ship, or bot ship, I'm sorry, just warped in. And unfortunately, that's where I'm going to have to leave it. My son is about to wake up, and this seems like a good place to start. We're going to be beginning round five of the first mission of Bot Wars, Escape from Crystallia. Uh, Crystallia is over here somewhere. It is. Before I sign off uh, for good, or until next time, I wanted to read a little bit um, out of the book for the crew so that they could use it in their interactions. This is the portion called uh, Captain's Authority. As a cooperative adventure game, there are many styles of play to choose from in determining the shipboard chain of command. The referee and players should come to a consensus beforehand on how they will resolve authority issues. What if one player wants to turn the ship but another thinks they should be decelerating the ship? The game wouldn't be as much fun if one player were in complete command and everyone else was limited to playing out their roles like bots. The Universal Republic takes a broad view of discipline among the ranks. The referee may apply a slight prestige penalty to characters that disregard the chain of command as well as for captains that don't take their crew's advice into consideration. So I think how I'm going to play that is there is a chain of command, right? Um, you have your lieutenants and all that. And then also, um, you know, there's one person who's designated to ultimately be in charge. I think I will make it such that that person is allowed to make complaints to command and vice versa, people are allowed to make complaints. And then um, there will be some arbitration and then it would probably be like a prestige penalty if there, if someone was found to be guilty of um, insubordination. I think that's the word. All right.